Trump might give a little bit more wiggle room to Netanyahu than he already has. Uh, but Trump might also say, you know, like you give me a list of 10 people you need to get rid of and you give me a time frame and that's what you have. After that, you know, even, even I will start to sort of uh, remove my troops from, from Israel. Like there are 100 new troops that have entered Israel to operate the mm -hmm. third missile system. Welcome to the GIST and Stack News Global. I'm Ram Anandar Sen Gupta. We're going to be talking about the death of uh, Yahya Silver, the head of Hamas. And with me today is Mr. Kamit Kaneja, Deputy Director and Fellow of the Middle East Strategic Studies Program at the Observer Research Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us, Kabir. I appreciate you taking time out at such short notice. Thank you. you know, I noticed a mountain of books behind you. That's that's like a lot. I thought I had books, <laughs> but like, okay. Um, you know, let's let's um, cut to the chase right from the beginning. Does this guy um, 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 Silver's death? Does that mean that um, the Hamas is more or less leaderless now, or are there still people? you know, in the fray to keep on pushing for leadership roles. And what does it really mean for the Hamas? So, you know, that's a very interesting question. And I think that's a question that's like obviously on everyone's mind. But I think with the death of Sinwar, you know, the uh, the personalities within Hamas mm -hmm. have been eliminated at least. Right. So the big names that we've known for decades, uh, whether it's Ismail Haniya, whether it's uh, Yaya Sinwar and uh, 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 amongst others, uh, those have been eliminated. So now, you know, what okay. comes next, what comes next is uh, is anybody's guess. No one in, there is no one or very few people in line that have that kind of uh, magnetism to them, uh, which uh, some of these personalities had. Um, and they were they were very well sort of almost household names uh, in, in the region, uh, whether from a threat perspective or from another perspective, the people who supported them. Uh, so uh, whoever comes next, I think will have a will have a humongous task of of trying to reestablish uh, uh, Hamas uh, as a group. Now, whether that is allowed by Israel or any other entity is also a very big question that they will have to okay. they will have to determine. So we'll have to see. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you could just uh, uh, let me throw a couple of names. There is the, the uh, what's his name? There's Mohammed Dave. There's uh, Marwar or whatever his, that guy's name was. All those guys are all gone now. Who is left? So you know, the, the, Mohammed Daif is an interesting story. Uh, he's claimed killed, but we haven't really seen any evidence of uh, the fact that Mohammed Daif has died. So oh, okay. uh, yeah. So that, uh, gone, but, uh, that would be interesting. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so you know, so there are these these couple of sort of gray areas. We've seen this happen in the past as well. For example, in Afghanistan, where a Taliban leader was presumed dead for a period That's of right. time, I, they, I heard of people being killed several times. I mean, every few yeah, months. So they 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 re-enter the fray. Uh, but you know, for which is why I think uh, for uh, which is why I think the Israelis released that video of of and pictures of uh, of uh, Yaya Sinwar being being killed, just to sort of ascertain that you know it has taken place. Uh, uh, but, you know, uh, 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 sort of now the problem is that some of the leaders that are left behind, which are still sort of known, let's say Khalid Mashal, who is one of the personalities who was seen as uh, uh, a replacement for Ismail Haniya when he was assassinated in Tehran. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they are political actors, right? They are the people that uh, one would like uh, to, let's say, try and negotiate with, uh, considering the fact that we are still, I mean, the Israelis will still need to talk to someone about the hostages. I found it very, very strange that uh, that uh, 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 that Sinwar was at a place where there were no hostages. He was not underground. He was in a building which was bombed out already. So that was very uh, that was very peculiar, considering where they always thought he's going to be. Considering he's the leader he, of the group. He seemed to be sitting on a sofa or something, and he, I mean, he, he, that was the last moments we've seen that video. There's a video going. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Right, 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 exactly, right. So, so um, you know, so. Uh, uh, and if you if you see from the Gaza side or the military side, well, say let's say even in the Al Qasem brigades, which is a sort of the military wing uh, in 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 Gaza, we are talking about people like uh, people are talking Mohammed Sinwar, as you just mentioned, who's uh, the brother of Yaya mm -hmm. Sinwar. We've not actually uh, heard of Mohammed Sinwar much, so he doesn't exactly. come off as a. No, yeah, I mean, he I, first time I've heard of him, I didn't even know he yeah, so, brother, but then... Exactly, so he doesn't come off as a personality that uh, uh, that has that gravitas within the movement to take over. 
per se right um, uh, and of course there is another argument that says that uh, you know sinwar took over after ismail haniya uh, uh, was a power move within hamas uh, because he wanted to take away the decision making power away from the political part like ismail haniya was slightly seen as a more objective personality and may give away right. a lot of things that sinwar wouldn't wouldn't have give away so what is that mm-hmm. dynamic going to be now considering there are no personalities is a very gray area within hamas also so okay. uh, so uh, un, like uh, from i mean from sitting afar uh, most analysts i think it is going to be a wait and watch situation on what what happens but this is definitely a very very stark blow to to hamas as a movement mm-hmm. so you know um let, let's just assume that it will take some time for these guys to come up with a leader and things like that until then what happens will these really just keep on pounding away at you know at, at uh, this place i i i think i see from the israeli point of view like we heard prime minister netanyahu say yesterday you know the war is not over uh yeah, with with the with the killing of sinwar that does not mean the operations end uh from a political point of view i think israel has just seen this as an opportunity to go after everything and anything they have always wanted to go after over the past two decades uh they they see is at a political moment where even the public opinion is mostly in supportive of these actions uh okay. and uh, yeah and secondly you know uh, uh, israel also has a window of another about 20 to 25 day or let's say a month ballpark uh, before the next us president comes into play and before the next us president sort of uh, uh, you know puts forward their view or policy on what is happening in gaza and what the american role is going to be right. that gives that gives uh, that kind of window to netanyahu to to continue its uh, his military and kinetic actions and take out whoever they want to take out at this point of time only after the new president comes in uh, will they find out whether proper pressure comes from washington dc and pushes netanyahu to to negotiate or to open talks or to at least come up with a political track on the sidelines of the military one Uh, that could depend on you know whether trump comes in or whether this uh, exactly comes in, right? exactly exactly i mean with trump you know uh, trump you know right is going to be transaction in one shape or the other absolutely uh, yes and- yeah and kamla harris hasn't actually talked much about foreign policy by herself so the expectation is that she may she may may just follow what biden has been doing till now uh, with right. some of the same team members also blinken is not going to be there but some of the others may still be around uh, but uh, it is also full uh, probability and a possibility that she comes up with her own set of rules and or rules of engagement with israel uh, considering Uh, uh uh if she wins the progressive part of the democratic party is going to play a major hand in her victory uh uh-huh. but you know there there's one um, argument which says that while the uh, democrats seem to be slightly reluctant sort of supporter of israel i'm i'm sure they're not because the lobby is pretty strong mm-hmm. if uh, trump comes in it's like you know he'll just say go get these guys and get get over with it Is that right? Ah, so that that's that's a decent way to look at it. Definitely, I think you know Trump might give a little bit more wiggle room to Netanyahu than he already has. Uh, but Trump might also say, you know, like you give me a list of ten people you need to get rid of, and you give me a time frame, and that's what you have. After that, you know, even even I will start to sort of uh, remove my troops from from Israel. Like there are hundred new troops that have entered Israel to operate the. Mm-hmm. third missile system uh, and and those are the kind of leverages that trump might use uh, to just say that uh, right. you ha- you have that window that's what i have given you do what you want to do in it if you fail beyond that i'm sorry but we will have to uh, we will have to come to an impasse at least if nothing else so but tell me something i was just curious that you know there are all these hostages hmm. is really hostages held in gaza yeah. now with this guy gone who has the you know idea of how many hostages are there where they are held is there somebody who that's, has the overall kind of idea that's that's a very good question i also asked myself that mm-hmm. is uh, when uh, when sinwar yeah. was killed which is why coming back to my point which i made sinwar being overground in a building with just two other people raises the question where are the hostages and even if now that sinwar is died where, who like who decides their fate within hamas uh right. right and i think there is no i'm i i think there's no clear answer to that at least in my mind at this point of time of who takes over but let, let's mm-hmm. let's be honest that uh, like any other good political or military system uh sinwar would have sort of at some level gamed the fact that if he is killed considering that that was a very high probability to begin with uh, since israel was mm-hmm. uh, you know really really seeking him out 
who is going to take over next or who is going to be in charge at some level i'm sure that decision was taken it's just that we don't know what who that person is going to be ah okay so 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 you're you're saying there's a chance that he's already been grooming somebody i it'd be very strange if that was not the case mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it would be very strange yeah so, uh, till they find a new sort of a you know person to take charge will the hamas be sort of uh, kind of a guerrilla force with everybody doing whatever they feel like or how, how does every man for himself look political as far as the political office goes if you see some of the statements being made after uh, after uh, let's say um, uh, nasrullah was killed and so on and so forth you know khalid mashale has become very very vocal over the past couple of weeks right so that uh, the the uh, the uh, uh, more vocalness of someone like mashal who is a fairly senior leader has been there for a long time would sort of at least play out in the way that okay the world knows him the americans know him the uh, qataris know him egyptians know him they might just push mashal to take over uh, so that at least they have some figurehead to talk to right the fact mm -hmm. that uh, the fact that sinwar took over last time basically stalled talks because a sinwar did not completely uh, trust the political uh, the hamas political elite in doha uh, and he of yeah. course did not trust the talks that were taking place uh, and he he thought that a compromise would be made and he would be in trouble in gaza and he would right. have to give up basically so now that right. is out of the picture on many levels i think someone like mashal or someone similar to that uh, to that uh, position uh, may just be put into place so that they can find an off ramp of some sort uh, uh, through doha through cairo and uh, it's so not necessarily through through gaza because uh, uh, as far as al qasem brigades go and who's going to take over militarily as i said uh, mm -hmm. uh, is anyone's guess at this point of time i see so you know i was listening to the state department spokesperson last night talking about this particular thing and he kept on reiterating that you know this guy was bad he was evil and he was the guy who was who was just refusing to negotiate so it's good that he's gone now we'll see who the next guy is which means the next person also that comes in knows that if he also takes a hard line i mean he's also likely to be on the firing line without any kind of a thing and How and that yeah i mean and that was one of the one of the arguments made by let's say for example a lot of arab states very quietly when when uh, ismail haniya was killed uh, they said that look ismail haniya was a person that was trying to sort of find a middle path at least um uh -huh. uh, in in the talks despite the fact that sinwar was very very rigid and adamant of not giving any inch out uh, from uh -huh. from his perspective uh, so uh, uh, you, so you know it's it's it 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 totally sort of uh, uh, it totally now depends on what the what the larger sort of blueprint is from the israeli point of view also you know what do they want to do it, because mm -hmm. considering everything else yes there are military operations uh, taking place right now in lebanon and in gaza uh but right. like for example the israeli defense forces have previously said that they are very uneasy about the thought of holding gaza territorially for months on end or years on end without a political solution coming into play uh mm -hmm. and and there are good examples about that right the americans did that in iraq and afghanistan and they got bogged down there really really hard uh, spent yes. a lot of money and ultimately did not come out on the other side with the desired results that they were hoping for uh so so mm -hmm. those those realities those realities are really really in the mind of the israelis also so i think at some level we also really need to see the political track from the israeli side that uh, that ultimately you know what uh, now that sinwar is gone now that haniya is gone that now that even uh, nasrullah is gone uh, uh, mm -hmm. what where is their red line where they would like to stop and at least ponder on what the political ideation is going to be and who's going to be in charge of uh gaza and who what kind of let's say palestinian authority they want to see in the future to take uh, some charge of the of of the palestinian question now now the idea is that okay fine you have neutralized the uh, extremists uh, you have neutralized the problem makers that israel always thought needed to go uh, for a more let's say argumentatively uh, fairer political process to take shape uh, uh, but uh, but you know uh, uh, we still need to see sort of what kind of a uh, blueprint that uh, 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 the israelis want to take forward right uh, uh, to the fact that uh, 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 what what is more palatable to them how do they see the future of palestinian authority for example how do they see who is going to govern gaza uh, like mm -hmm. i said before uh, like i said before the israeli defense forces have made their ease unknown previously also of uh, being the force taking care of gaza for months on end or years on end 
so um, yeah, so uh, and of course they know that that how how that kind of design goes they've seen the american struggle in iraq and afghanistan for example but the americans of course are geographically distant have deeper pockets and so on and so forth israel sure, is a fairly yes. small country mm -hmm. and israel also relies on american uh, uh, american defense supplies if those defense supplies are compromised or they, they are tightened by the americans themselves israel will struggle uh, to mm -hmm. uh, to maintain the same amount of offensive capability and deterrence capability that they are showing right now so uh, so you know it's it, there are a lot of there are a lot of questions uh, now specifically on the political tracks that can be mobilized considering the main main counter terrorism aims of the israelis have been accomplished by their by their side uh, uh, mm -hmm. and what but what those political tracks are no one has a clue right now and that's a huge huge problem because ideally they would have been already in place in some shape or form to take forward very right. quickly now that there is a political vacuum and we know for a fact that non state militant actors of any ken are actually very good to move in very quickly and swiftly wherever there is political vacuum. Absolutely. So how, yeah, so how how they manage this situation going forward, I think unfortunately, time will tell. You know, but uh, this uh, Netanyahu was quite clear that you know I will not let the Hamas be a part of the next sort of you know whatever power thing that comes in there. Mm -hmm. Would he be okay with the political faction of the Hamas coming in there because they, ultimately they both you know, two sides of the same coin. Yeah, no, I don't think, I, yeah, I, I don't think um, uh, Netanyahu would even any kind of mainstreaming uh, un, of Hamas under the Palestinian Authority itself. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if Israel is in a position to accept that. Uh, and that can also become a problem, right? Uh, right? Because one way to disarm one of any of these groups is to basically mainstream them politically. But Israel's ex Israel's experience is that look, that kind of mainstreaming mean mainstreaming happened in Lebanon, where uh, where uh, Hezbollah yeah. also fought elections. Hezbollah also won elections. It had parliamentary representation, but it did not stop the hostilities uh, uh, against Israel. So that mm -hmm. that that diagram of things also doesn't work for Israel. We have seen that backfire. That's not, that's not good enough. So that begs the question: You know what next? Like who is going to take into that fray? Uh, what kind of Palestinian? Uh, uh, what kind of Palestinian? Moderate Palestinian uh, political entity can take over, and whether can you even construct a moderate Palestinian entity considering the destruction that has taken place in Gaza? Uh, yes. You know, the, we have seen the kind of uh, uh, the kind of suffering that has taken place because of the military actions. Uh, 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 but what comes out of the rubble is also usually not very moderate. So, uh, so you don't, we, you don't cannot expect it to be moderate. Huh, I mean, uh, so so it, yeah, exactly right. I mean, uh, technically you can't, but uh, if, if, but if you had that kind of sort of political track at least in play on the side, uh, as mm -hmm. difficult as that track track may have been, I think the kinetic part would have been a little bit more absorbable uh, 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 going forward, so that you could at least move that political track a bit to the forefront now that these characters have been have, have been eliminated but that political track is completely absent at this point of time so there's nothing to move forward right it's a very good question on to what we are going to do next uh, and the answer is like no uh, I, I, at least i don't know what is going to happen from an israeli point of view or what kind of political thinking there is in in in, in israel right now within the netanyahu government mm -hmm. uh, is there any kind of clarity at all from even the us side as to what they are expecting because they think oh this is a chance for a ceasefire but who will they talk with so I think the bigger problem for the U.S. is that the construct of Netanyahu's government really, really uh, disallows him, or at least really, really sort of constricts him uh, to come up with a very, uh, let's say, middle of the path political idea that okay, let's talk to X, Y, Z uh, within the Palestinian system and so on and so forth, because his a lot of his uh, partners that are supporting him are from the far right kind of things, uh -huh. right? Uh, so they like uh, we, we even heard some of their ministers might be sanctioned by by the United Kingdom government, uh, as Prime right. Minister Steimer mentioned recently. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but still, uh, so th that that the far right element will will not really allow a very uh, moderate political, uh, let's say, dialogue even with the worst actors that you would like to talk to, ideally. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so even if they let's say someone like Khalil Mashal comes into play, who's seen as slightly more palatable, and he goes back to Qatar and said, "Look, look, all this has happened. I I'm offering this middle path of talks at least." 
uh, I'm not sure if uh, if Netanyahu is in a position to accept that, uh, uh, considering his own uh, his own domestic compulsions. Uh, so uh, from there, which is why uh, 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 he said yesterday that, that look, this this may well continue right now. We have we are not finished yet. Uh, uh, so uh, so I, it's very difficult, very very difficult to say because there are multiple layers to this that don't Absolutely. really have that. Uh, Exactly, and there are too many interests that are uh, that that are really not uh, overlapping each other. They are running parallel mm -hmm. to each other, right? So unless mm -hmm. overlapping happens till a certain extent, it's very difficult to put everyone in one room or around one table and say, okay, look, uh, um, uh, even if behind closed doors, very quietly, which has happened before, right? We have seen Israel's uh, uh, intelligence agencies deal with most uh, with Hamas for a long period of time. Uh, it's right. not like they were not having conversations with them. So, uh, so uh, if we, if somehow you can get back to those kind of at least some kind of dialogues, uh, maybe mm -hmm. even facilitated by by Arab partners and so on and so forth, um, uh, uh, it would be it would be easier. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah, right now, unlikely. So, uh, yeah. would I be right to sort of assess that? Let's say till the U.S. elections are over, not much is going to change. Number one. Uh, number two, I was just, you know, curious, and I know uh, uh, we are running out of time a little, but, you know, one of the things that is, about, again, one of the things that I've been curious about, would, would the Israelis, for instance, be okay with, let's say, the Fatah coming in from the West Bank and saying that, yeah, you know, we are the rulers. Would they be comfortable with that? Because they are also equally sort of, you know, anti Yeah, yeah I, I mean, see, yeah, on paper, uh, look, Fatah is a, is a, was a secularist organization on paper at least right uh, and that is why mm -hmm. hamas and fatah fought for a long That's period right. of time mm -hmm. so uh, i mean i would presume that fatah would be uh, uh, at least some organization that they would be slightly okay with to talking to at least uh, when moving forward that's certainly one example that is not the worst example uh, considering the mm -hmm. options that are there uh, uh, but of course, uh, like I said, you know, even any Palestinian organization going into talks with Israel right now would first and foremost have to convince Israel for a ceasefire, because they, they, I don't think they will they will find themselves of any support amongst the Palestinian people if they're talking to Israel while they are, Israel is still continuing to bomb Palestinians in Gaza, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so, and that is a very difficult proposition to take to the Israelis even from Fatah right. side or even from from the Palestinian Authority side or anyone's side uh, but uh, like but the I think the only major pressure valves that will come on Israel is probably after the US elections even if you see the ceasefire talks from a couple of months ago uh, from both sides the Hamas at that point of time yeah. and the others the argument was look they will drag this down till the next president comes into play because uh, if what if this president guarantees it and the other other president takes it out of the picture which is what which is what happened which is what happened with jcpoa for example right mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, so that argument was there so i think we will not really see anything tangible unless the new us president comes into play and if the new us new us president is really wants to get involved in this uh, thoroughly that's also a question right we are taking it for granted that they will do something uh, 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 really stupendous to stop this so uh, so till i think january at least january end we really won't see much happening as far as the political track is concerned. Okay, the last quick question before we wrap this up. You know, can any player come into power or whatever it is in West Bank or I mean, I mean somebody in the Hamas or let's say even the Hezbollah without Iranian support? Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, uh, Iran, Iran supported these organizations as an opportunistic uh, 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 thing, right? Especially Hamas. Look, Hezbollah is much more aligned with Iran. His, for, for Iran, Hezbollah is a crown jewel in the region, right? Because it's, it's a Shia organization. It's something that the Iranians have really, really honed, supported, made the blueprints for and so on and so forth. We saw after so much damage in, in Beirut, you know, the Iranians were one of the first people from the IRGC to the foreign minister to land in Beirut, despite Be Beirut being bombed uh, regularly by, by the Israelis. They took all mm -hmm. those risks to show support to Hezbollah that despite in your darkest hour, we are with you. They haven't done that with Hamas per se, right? Hamas, okay. Hamas, enjo Hamas enjoyed uh, some uh, or fair bit of patronage actually from from the Iranians, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, uh, that was just part of the larger design from Iran that look we will support anyone 
who is in favor of the Palestinian cause and who is pushing back against the Israeli uh, uh, quote unquote occupation in 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 in, in Palestine. But now that uh, but to a certain extent, as far as Hamas is concerned, uh, they are much more uh, uh, they are much more uh, uh, you know non-aligned with the with with the Iranians than what Hezbollah is. Hezbollah yeah. is attached at the hip. Hamas is not attached at the hip, but uh, but they enjoyed the patronage. Mm -hmm. With that, I'm afraid, you know, we'll have to cut this uh, interview. As I always keep saying, you know, there's so many questions to ask that we'll go on forever. But um, thank you so very much. And I look forward to having you. you again when we have some kind of clarity on, you know, what the situation sure. is going to be like. Sure. Do you see that happening sometime soon? I hope so. You know the the uh, the amount of civilian casualties on every side, even in in, mm -hmm. in 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 on the Israeli side, on on Gaza, and now in Lebanon, uh, it has been has been uh, has been quite bad, right? So uh, uh, just for the sake of coming to some sort of uh, some sort of impasse, if nothing else, where hostilities can stop, maybe some more aid can go into some places. Uh, uh, just for that sake, I think uh, the ceasefire as soon as it comes through. Uh, with the with the blessings of all the parties, I think it will be better for everyone. Let's hope that happens soon. Thank you so very much. And like I said, I look forward to having you again. Just stay online till you just complete this. But come back to you in a minute. That is Kabir Faneja, Deputy Director and Fellow, Middle East, the Strategic Studies Program at the Observer Research Foundation talking to us about the um, events in the Middle East post the assassination of Yaha Sinwar of the Hamas. I do hope you enjoyed this particular edition of the GIST and I look forward to having you with us again next time. Till then, this is Ramananda Sengupta signing out.